Okay. Now, uh, just if you want to just state your first name and what your worldview is. And hi, my name is John. I'm agnostic, and while I don't necessarily agree with what you're protesting for today, I do respect your First Amendment right to protest. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, any questions you have or comments? I guess about what. Uh, so, what are you guys really against? Uh, atheists, drunks, liars, thieves, sexual perverts, religious hypocrites. Is that the general guess? And I also see you're not really too fond for porn. Yeah, um, you know, now there are probably some more things that could be by the banners only so tall, but uh, I think that's a pretty good list, a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good starting point. Um, if someone is an atheist, they're denying, they're denying God. Uh, they're breaking the first commandment to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If they're a drunk, the Bible's very clear. A lot of drunkenness on college campuses. And uh, so we want to tell people, listen, you going out getting wasted at keg parties and, you know, every football game, uh, that's not okay with God. I mean, it might, you know, your friends think it's hilarious and a riot. And, uh, you know, it seems like a good time to you. But uh, the Bible says that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. So so we, we care about the drunkard enough to say, listen, put down the bottle, pick up the Bible. Uh, liars and thieves, I mean, nobody should be pro-liar or pro-thieves. So yeah, obviously. Sexual, sexual pervert. pervert. Yeah, now, sexual pervert includes a lot of things. Sexual pervert includes um, anyone having sex outside of God's intended plan, which is one man and one woman in holy matrimony. So that includes people having sex before marriage, uh, people having adultery, adulterous relationships inside of marriage. Uh, it includes homosexuality. It includes uh, probably even pornography, things like that. So any any sexual sex that you're having outside of God's plan, that's a sexual purpose. So that covers a lot of people. And religious hypocrite. Uh, religious hypocrite, that bothers a lot of people. The South, were you raised here? Yes, I was okay. raised in South Carolina. Okay. And again, I was born a uh, Baptist. So. Okay. Uh, and religious hypocrites, probably one of the biggest problems in, in the South because there's so many people down in the South that all claim to be Christians because their granddaddy was a pastor or whatever. But uh, here in the South, the Bible says the Lord knows those who are his, let all those who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So that means if you claim to be a Christian, you better be living holy and righteously and obedient. Because God knows who's his and who isn't. And just because your granddaddy was a pastor, just because you say to go to such and such church, uh, doesn't mean, you know, but then you live like the rest of the world the rest of the week. Uh, you're in a lot of trouble. All right. What, uh, tell me, why, uh, why did you go from being a Christian to an agnostic? Uh, I became agnostic mainly because I started looking into like ancient history and I noticed there's a huge trend. So you have ancient Egyptians and their paganistic gods, then you go into the Greeks, paganistic gods again, the Romans, paganistic gods, and then somewhere in the mix, you start to have the Christians, I want to say roughly around the time that the Persian Empire started to be a thing, you can actually see references of Darius giving payment to the God of Yahweh for small certain Christian segments. So from my mind, it's like, alright, well, it's not necessarily the first religion that's been historically documented. So I was like, all right, well. Now are you talking about 6,000 years ago with the Jews or 2,000 years ago with Christians? Um, not 2,000 years ago with the Christians because okay. that would be during the Roman Empire okay. time. I'm referring to the height of the Persian Empire, which I want to say was roughly 2,600 years ago. Sorry, I'm using hands. I'm a little bit of time. So. What about what about the Jews who are monotheistic and their history goes back? over 6,000 years. Okay, well I'm not necessarily going off of that because I don't have the, the knowledge for that. Again, I'm going off of my interest in ancient Greek history and ancient Roman history. And based off of what I've read about the Persian Empire, there was a moment where Darius and Cyrus paid tribute to the God of Yahweh. Okay. And this so, was around 2,600 years ago, roughly. Okay. So you, uh, so you're not, so you're not, no longer a Christian. But what, what is it that you're living for? What do you believe? Uh, what do you believe you're living for? What, what gives you purpose, and why? So I'm a very staunch believer. I used to be pretty nihilistic about things, and it caused a bit of depression. But what I started to do instead was I really focus on making sure that whatever I do, it helps better this country in the end when I leave for it. I'm a very staunch believer in the idea of the republic the Constitution and human rights. That's why I disagree with you, but I'm still allowing you to talk and voice your opinion. And I'm really appreciating that you're allowing me to talk and voice my opinion as well. So in my mind, if I can do stuff to help better the Republic and set it off for a better precedent, then hey, things are all good. And, and what is it that you believe What is it that you believe happens after we die? Uh, do we fade to black and that's it? Is there some type of afterlife? What are your thoughts after you die? Uh, my personal thoughts, and this is just Myself, I don't really have any backing for this. Just die, fade off into nothingness. I'm very aware that you guys have the concept of heaven, hell, 
purgatory, somewhere in between. Well, and not purg purgatory. Purgatory is a lie of the Catholic Church, so that's okay. a lie of the devil. So <laughs> yeah, there is no purgatory. That's a lie. But so yeah, that's a uh, that's where it stands. Okay. That's why I'm like really. And you said so. You said your purpose was to like better say it again, kind of to better to mankind. Better the or, I believe that if you have rule of law, which I think we can all agree, we'd much rather prefer because if we were like a staunchly like religious like you know country where all right the head of the church like decides things. Here's the thing throughout history. Different churches will come to power and all of a sudden you'll see people getting prosecuted. Take for instance the Eastern Roman Empire or the Byzantine Empire. You would have like a staunchly like Christian population and then you have a paganistic emperor that suddenly starts persecuting Christians. Right, what so um, now wh where where do you say everything began? Do you believe like Big Bang Theory type of thing? Yes, I, mean, I do where, believe okay. in the Big Bang Theory. Okay. However, I'm not well versed enough in science to give an actual argument for that. I leave it up to the authorities. Okay. On well, that. let me. And your first name again? I'm sorry. My first name is John. John Count, buddy. Yeah. Uh, John. So what, the problem that I have, and the, the thing that I, I really, and actually, when I talk to atheists and agnostics, I know you said agnostic, not atheist, but kind of similar. One, uh, actually, I appreciate agnostics more because they say they don't know. Yeah. Whereas and that's atheists where I say they, they do know and they don't. They can't. Um, so, uh, so as an atheist or agnostic who believes matter just came from an explosion, you know, in space, hydrogen, helium shoots out in friction space, you know, plus time gives us everything we have. And then when we die, we fade to black. There's no memory of what we did, no regret of what we could have done more of, etc. But then you're saying that your, you know, that your purpose in life is to better the republic, to better <laughs> mankind, the people around you. But one, one question is, what is better? And who defines better? And number two, what difference could it possibly make? Now, if you came from nothing and you're going to nothing, and the same is true with every other person who ever has or ever will exist, then whether they spent their entire life staring at a blank wall and died of starvation, or they lived their entire life in pure hedonism and joy, and then they died, it won't make any difference uh, whatsoever to that person or to anyone else. So, one, what is better and who defines better and why is that better? And two, what difference could it possibly make when everybody's going to fade to black and have no memory or regret? That's a really big uh, question. And honestly, it's going to take a bit of time to answer. So, uh, so your first question again was, what difference does it make and what does it matter for? Yeah. Okay, so for my personal justification, the reason why I get up in the morning is historically I do believe that republics tend to work better than monarchies and straight up democracies. So again, that's a big reason why I'm supporting of this because I feel like it allows more people to do what they want without imposing upon other people's rights and just enjoy their general life. And I understand that there's, you know, a group of people that they don't really feel that purpose, they don't have any they kinda get really depressed and nihilistic about it. And again that's where I used to be. But here's the thing, your purpose in life is whatever you want it to be. So there Again. is no, so what I'm, what I'm saying is then, if your purpose in life is what you want it to be, then whatever your anybody wants, point. whatever anybody wants their purpose in life to be is correct. And if someone else has the exact opposite opinion that's diametrically opposed to what that person said is the purpose of life, whatever is most important, then they're both right. So, so there, there actually in the end isn't any real meaning. It's kind of what, what I try to describe it as is if, if you're, if you came from nothing and you're going to nothing, you're just living your life on the line between two points of nothingness, then for you to say something has meaning, it's kind of like a, like a pauper or like a homeless guy taking scraps of paper and crayons and drawing million dollar bills and then saying he's rich. You know, it's kind of cute, it kind of makes him feel good, but it has no value and no, no purpose whatsoever. And that's, see that's where the point where I get at with an agnostic or an atheist. I want you to be a better agnostic and a better atheist, especially atheist. And I always tell atheists, an atheist that I actually really respected was Ernest Hemingway because he was consistent. Um, he said, life is a dirty trick. It's a short journey from nothingness to nothingness. And man's existence in this universe is no different than a colony of ants trapped on a burning log. Now that's a brilliant statement and that, that is pure atheism and that's a true statement if atheism is true because <coughs> you, it's a dirty trick. You pretend like you have meaning when you have none and you're like a colony of ants on a burning log. They can't go anywhere, they can't do anything. Whatever they do on that log will actually amount to nothing and in the end it all burns up and that's, that's what I believe happens.
happens with the atheist agnostic. So actually, if if atheism were true, you did live kind of one of the one of the two possibilities for how your life should go. If atheism were true, if atheism were true, the two most logical uh, ways of life, one would be nihilism, because you came from nothing, you're going to nothing. So really, everything between two points of nothing is nothing and meaningless. And the sun's going to go supernova and burn up the earth anyway. So everything that ever happened in human history will actually amount. Go ahead and preach. Will amount to absolutely nothing uh, because it, it's all meaningless. And nihilism makes sense. Or the other option would be hedonism. Hey. I don't have any chance after this. I'm going to die. I'm going to fade to black. Nothing. I mean, this is the only chance I got. I'm going to live it up, live up every second that I possibly can, do everything short of going to jail or whatever, or getting killed. And uh, so hedonism and nihilism do make very good sense if atheism is true. But something in between of, well, I have meaning and I want to be a doctor because this and that. Being a doctor is nonsensical for an atheist or agnostic because people are going to die anyways, whether they died at 30 or whether they died at 90. They're still going to die. They're still going to fade to black. Nothing meant anything, and uh, so so you did. So you were consistent when you were a nihilist, but now I think you're falling into that nebulous part where you're not being consistent with well, your worldview. Here's my point again. And so yes, there is a point where I go get extremely nihilistic. And to be honest, a lot of this is just going to fade up. It might be point into just nothingness, you know, blackness. It's not going to really matter to me when I'm dead. But at the same time, it is so. There's like this whole cosmic thing where it's like the chances of me like not having come to fruition are so massive that the fact that I'm actually here in this current form that I am in really big deal for myself because I personally like being alive. And so what I've tried to do is with what little time I have and this small little theater that I'm in right now, just try and do what I enjoy. And so that could be heathenistic, but I personally find that I really enjoy certain things in life, like studying history, like standing up for other people's rights, that kind of stuff. Yeah. What I'm saying is history really is pointless if atheism is true, because one day the sun goes supernova, burns up the earth, oh, no, it definitely and, is true. and everything that ever happened here, good, bad, or indifferent, is all meaningless. But uh, well, Let's keep talking, but I'll, I'll turn the camera off. But go ahead and take your final statement, anything you want the world to know about you or your beliefs, or and just whatever, every, any statement you want to make, I guess. Well, again, I'm John, agnostic and why vehemently disagree with you, I am glad we could have this conversation and at least come to uh, an agreement on what we disagree with. Right, thank you, John.